Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 4 under the topic lead compensator. To start with, it will be better if you go through the procedure of how to solve a problem using lead compensator. I had made a separate video for that. I will give the link in the description. The problem is design a lead compensator for a unity feedback system with open loop transfer function to meet the following specifications. So, percentage peak overshoot is 12.63. Natural frequency of oscillation is 8 radian per second. And velocity error constant should be greater than or equal to 2.5. So, a open loop transfer function is given. And we have to design a lead compensator in such a way that it has to meet all the three specifications. So, the step one is determine the dominant pole. So, dominant pole is given by this formula. SD is equal to minus zeta omega n plus or minus j omega n into root of 1 minus zeta square. So here the value of omega n is 8 radian per second and peak overshoot is 12.63 percentage. These are all the data which is given in the problem. So here we are using the formula of peak overshoot. So it is given by e power minus zeta pi divided by root of 1 minus zeta square into 100. So, the value of peak overshoot is given as 12.63. So, just substitute the values here. And when you move this 100 to the left hand side, 12.63 by 100 gives 0.1263. The next step is taking ln on both sides. When you take ln on both sides, you see here we are having the values like this. That is the exponential term get cancelled. Right. Then the next step is squaring on both sides. When you square on both sides, we are having an expression like this. So after squaring, we are having an expression. The next step is just I am moving this 1 minus zeta square to the right hand side. And here I am bringing that is multiplying this 4.28 with the element inside this bracket. Right. And the next step is I am combining the zeta square terms together. So here I am having zeta square pi square and here I am having minus 4.28 zeta square, right. So when you move this minus 4.28 zeta square, here it will become plus, right. So again here zeta square is common, so I am taking commonly outside. And by further solving, the value of zeta is found to be 0.55, right. Now, just substitute this value in the formula of dominant pole. So here the dominant pole is given by this expression. We know the value of omega n and just now we had find out the value of zeta. So just substitute the values here and finally the value of dominant pole is found to be this. Right. We have to mark this on our graph sheet. So let us complete step 2 as well. Right. So the step 2 is. So this is the basic step we all know the poles are denoted by a cross and zeros are denoted by this zero that is a small circle and here the dominant pole is denoted as P right. So this is our graph sheet right first you have to write this scale so x axis stands for real terms and y axis stands for imaginary terms right. So just write down the values right just you have to scale the x and y axis then what is our first step we have to locate our dominant pole right the value of dominant pole is so we are now going to locate our dominant pole and this is the value of the dominant pole right so minus 4.4 and in y axis it is 6.7 right so this is our dominant pole right then the next thing is we have to locate the remaining poles and zeros which are given in the transfer function. So from the transfer function we are having three poles right. The value of poles are s equal to 0 and s equal to minus 4 and s equal to minus 7 right. Step 3 is to find the angle contributed by the lead network. The next step is we have to draw lines from the poles to this dominant pole st right. So mark the angles as theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. Now we are going to measure these angles. Right. So theta 1 is given as 180 minus tan inverse of imaginary 
length divided by this real part length right so tan inverse of here the imaginary length here it is 6.7 and the real term length is found to be 4.4 right so just substitute the values and the value of theta 1 is 123 degrees right and the next one is theta 2 so on theta 2 is given by again you see 180 minus tan inverse of again the imaginary coefficient divided by the distance you see here the distance is found to be 0.4 why because you see here our pole is located here right so the distance from our dominant pole is you see our dominant pole lies at minus 4.4 here right so here lies our dominant pole and here is our pole which is given in the transfer function so what is the distance between these two points 4 minus 4.4 is 0.4 right so that is the reason here why we are writing 0.4 right so when you solve we are getting the answer as 93 degrees and here for theta 3 you see here we are taking tan inverse of imaginary term divided by this real length right so tan inverse of here the distance is again you see here the y axis distance remains the same right 6.7 but here again the distance between uh, this dominant pole and this point right here it is 4.4 and here it is 7 right so when you subtract the answer will be 2.6 so here the angle is found out to be 69 degrees right so here arises a doubt right why here in these cases i had included 180 and why here 180 is not included right the thing is you see here we are having our dominant pole dominant poles real part right so when you have poles on the right hand side then you have to include 180 degrees whereas when you have pole to the left of this point you can just simply take tan inverse of this imaginary distance divided by the real distance from the dominant pole right so finally we had find out theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 so here pi is given by sum of angles contributed by poles of uncompensated system minus sum of angles contributed by zeros of uncompensated system plus or minus n into 180 degrees right so sum of angles contributed by poles so we are having three poles right so theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 when you substitute the values the final answer is 285 degrees right and here you see we are having this term right plus or minus n into 180 degrees so here pi is 285 degree plus or minus n into 180 so here the substitute the value of n equal to 1 so the value of pi is found out to be 105 degrees so whenever the value of pi is greater than 60 degrees that is we are having 105 degree okay which is greater than 60 so we have to design lead compensator in such a way that lead compensator is a combination of two compensators that is we have to introduce two compensators for this transfer function okay each will each of the compensator will contribute half of the required angle right since the value of angle is greater than 60 degrees we are going to use a combination of two compensators right and each compensator will contribute half of the angle so here the angle is pi is equal to 105 by 2 so when you divide it is 52.5 and finally the angle is 52 degrees right so this is our graph sheet right so the next thing is we have to draw a line parallel to x axis from this dominant pole okay let this be sd here so i have to draw a line which is parallel to x axis down here so see i have drawn a line ap which is parallel to the x axis here right then the next step is we have to measure the angle apo right let me measure and show you so now we are going to measure the angle apo right so by using a protractor you see the angle is found to be exactly it is 122 degrees right so 122 we have to divide that angle by 2 so 122 by 2 will give you 6 to 12 right the angle will be 61 here so again just mark the value of angle 61 it lies over here right now 
we have to draw a line in such a way that it connects your dominant pole and the x axis wait i'll show you after drawing so you see here this is our this line is known as bisector of the angle apo right because the total angle is you see it is 122 degrees when you divide it by 2 it is 61 so i have just marked the point 61 and i have joined the dominant pole and the negative x axis right the next step is step number 4 to find the poles and zeros of the compensator so we had already done this right we had drawn a line ap parallel to x axis and we had measured the bisector and i had drawn the bisector line also right here you see what is the value of pi it is 52 degrees right we have to divide this 52 by 2 again so you see here the angle is found to be 26 degrees now again we have to go back to the graph sheet and we have to mark the angle 26 degrees so you see the bisector line measures an angle of 61 degrees right so the thing is what is the angle which is to be measured we have to mark 26 degrees that is from this bisector line you have to mark a 26 degree line above as well as 26 degree line below right so for that purpose the angle measured here is 61 right so here you see i have added 61 plus 26 gives you 87 okay it will come downwards and 61 minus 26 gives you 35 degrees now we are going to mark these two points right so okay just keep the protractor so what is the first angle i am taking 87 degree right so here you see when you measure here comes 87 degrees right mark a point of 87 degree and what is the second angle it is 35 degrees so likewise here you just mark the angle of 35 degrees right so now again we have to draw a line from the dominant pole through this point to the x axis right so here we had marked two points on the x axis you see one point is here and another one is here okay so just from the location write down the point where they are located since we are designing a lead compensator here lies our zero and here lies our pole right so by measuring just write down the values of poles and zeros right so here the zero lies at -4.65 no 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 need to be exactly -4.65 right even -4.55 or 4.7 it doesn't make that much difference right just i had followed the book if you even stop with -4.6 it is well and good right and again here the pole value is given by -13.55 the next thing is so after that just measure the distance from poles and zeros to the dominant pole right so you see the distance from this pole i have taken it as l1 and from this pole as l2 and from this compensator zero as l3 and from this pole as l4 and the compensator pole as l5 just measure the distance using a scale and write down the values right you see here i had write down the values here likewise just you just draw measure it using a scale right we have drawn the lines already so just measure it using the scale that's it right so from the graph we had find out the values of compensator pole and zero right so by the formula we know the value of zc is minus 1 by t just by substituting the value of zc find out the value of t it is found out to be 0.215 the next thing is pc is given by minus 1 by alpha t so just now we had find out the value of t right we know the value of pc we know the value of t so substitute and find out the value of alpha right the step 5 is determining the transfer function of lead compensator so lead compensator is given by this formula s plus 1 by t the whole square divided by s plus 1 by alpha t the whole square so we know the value of 1 by t we know the value of 1 by alpha t so just directly substitute it here the next thing is step 6 finding the open loop transfer function of the lead compensator system so we already know that we should always connect the compensator in series with the 
given transfer function right so here you see this is the given transfer function and this is the compensator that we designed right so just connect it in series and since it is a unity feedback system just we have drawn a line here that's it so what is the value of open loop transfer function the value of open loop transfer function is so just we have to multiply these two values that's it because these two elements are connected in series here so this is our open loop transfer function so in open loop transfer function we are having the value k right it is a constant so the value of k is given by product of vector lengths from all poles to the dominant pole divided by product of vector lengths from all zeros to the dominant pole right so here again when you look back at the graph sheet so what are all the distances from poles you see l1 is from pole l2 is from pole l4 is from pole and again l5 is from pole right so here we are writing it as l1 into l2 into l4 into that is 2l5 here why we are including 2 is that is the length contributed by the compensator pole right so only here and i had included 2 divided by we are having only one zero that two it is a compensator zero so here i had included two into l3 right that's it just we had measured all the values right just substitute it over here and finally the value of k is found out to be six eight five so just substitute this value in the open loop transfer function so finally the open loop transfer function arrives like this right then the next step is checking for the error requirement these values are mentioned in the problem that is you have to design a lead compensator and that lead compensator should meet our specifications right so here in the problem they had mentioned as you see the velocity error constant should be greater than or equal to 2.5 just now we are going to check it so velocity error constant that is kv is given by the formula limit s tends to 0 s into g naught of s right s into g naught of s you see just now we had calculated here so just substitute it and finally when you substitute the value of s equal to 0 the value of kv is found out to be 2.88 right so finally we are concluding you see the velocity error constant of the compensated system satisfies the requirement because it meets the value which is given in the specifications right therefore the design is accepted right so here comes the end of our problem. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Thank you.